Temperatures will be in the 90s this week, and that means taking special precautions for our pets. And our pet vet, Dr. David Visser, joins us right now to tell us a little bit about the dangers of high temperatures and how to be prepared to help our pets stay cool and hydrated. How's it going? Good morning, Dr. Visser. Good morning. You know, every year we're facing this. We get this uh, really nice thing about nice weather. We're really excited mm -hmm. about that. Pets are excited to be outdoors more, but we forget about the dangers that this warm weather poses. And it's really an important thing for us to place this focus on there. Uh, every year, this uh, this is an issue. We see pets that have this uh, this issue. Right, 100%, especially like you mentioned, this time of year. Mm -hmm. And pets can even have troubles in the yard at home too. This is just, yeah. this isn't just going for walks and such. Yeah, exactly. This is really important for people to be aware of some of the signs that, uh, that uh, pets would show and be uh, exposed to. Mm -hmm. uh, the temperatures can cause pets to certainly breathe heavier. They're gonna um, be perhaps uh, having more vigorous panting at rest. Panting is their way to try and get rid of this extra heat. Um, sometimes the, the weakness that produces uh, or that gets produced from this can cause them to be unwilling to move around or rise. And so a pet that uh, illogically is still out in the middle of the yard panting, you might need to give them some help because they might not have the strength to move to another area. But that dehydration that occurs causes saliva and other liquids to just kind of dehydrate and that uh, can cause frothing from the nose or the mouth. And of course, as these electrolyte changes and uh, hydration changes occur, their muscles are, are forming a toxic sort of effect. Those muscles can become rigid, sore. They have another reason not to move around. Pets don't really have a lot of ways in which they can get rid of this extra heat. Mm -hmm. Panting is one thing, but we've changed a lot of dogs' um, uh, configuration. You know, the short-nosed dogs don't have that extra portion of nose right. that's involved in heat exchange. And so this is especially important with the short-nosed dogs, brachycephalic breeds as we call them, bulldogs as you might uh, be able to picture. Um, but uh, there's, they don't have sweat glands on their skin, just just on their pads and maybe on the nose. And so they just can't really get rid of that excess heat as easily uh, as other uh, species. And talk about getting rid of some of that excess mm -hmm. heat. And what are, I guess, some of the tips for families who have pets that are living outdoors and yeah. are gonna be in that heat all the time? Yeah, this is as good a time as any to say that indoors is certainly the best and mm -hmm. safest place. Even garages, people think, is protection from the direct sun. It acts a lot more like an oven. It creates a lot of uh, heat. And so it's nice to, uh, that a pet can get away from an area, but watch that the temperatures there can uh, increase as well. So it's important uh, if you do have pets that are outside, you have a couple things that are in place. Make sure there's plenty of water available. We now want to make sure that these uh, dishes are heavy, that they're not going to be knocked over. Um, I'm not really uh, in favor of pets being on lines or leashes, but those things could clearly knock over a dish as well. Have a shaded area that they can get away to, but air circulation is important for two reasons I'll get to in a second, but first is just to move the air. Uh, hot air that is stagnant really can be a, have a heavier effect on pets and make sure that there's a cooling area that they can get into. Is that the garage? I doubt it. Um, but a cool hose shower might be a, a, available in the yard and provided for pets. But what's important to realize is that that uh, moisture on a coat also attracts flies. And they really don't have a lot of ability to move around, let alone to wag their tail or to you know, shoo the flies away. Right. And these flies are prone to lay eggs in this moist fur. And then, uh, and then you have a maggot issue. And I don't want to get gross at breakfast time, but this is really something that is even more significant than a heat uh, issue that occurs at that time. Wow. So got a, got a couple things to be watching out for, especially Absolutely. with this heat coming as well too. And obviously these aren't just for the ones that are going to be outside. This can happen if you're going on a quick walk too. Oh, so yeah. what are some tips for people who are going on walks uh, to be advised for? Well, this is really important. It may seem like pets are built to be able to handle all of the things that are outdoors and in the weather. Um, and pads certainly are thick, but pads can get burned. And so if they're walking on these hot pavement areas, the temperatures are really, really super hot. They can cause blisters and it will not necessarily be something that people will see right then. Sometimes those blisters don't erupt for a day or two. So make certain that we are avoiding the chance of having some uh, burns on the pads by walking at cool times of day. That's morning, that's evening, but put the back of your hand down on the pavement. If, you're, if you can tolerate having the back of your hand down there without it feeling like it's burning, and remember your hand's only there for a couple seconds, it's going to be too hot if you can't even have your hand there. But walking during the, the cooler times will also reduce the uh, um, uh, risk of having flies and other exposures around too. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty interesting too, kind of doing that own test for yourself too, because your, your pets are walking on that the whole time too. That's yeah, a very absolutely. Good point. It's really important. Right. And I guess, for, so what should people do if they do suspect that their pets may be having some heat exhaustion from these hot, hot yeah. temperatures that we're going through? I think urgent attention is important, but we have to be careful as we're providing some cool 
cooling, that we're not doing things too fast. So certainly remove a pet from the, the heated area, get them into a cooler environment. Don't apply ice or cold water because circulation can affect those areas that you're applying the ice and cold water to. That would be too rash or too uh, sudden of a change. But don't give anything by mouth initially, but wet the body with cool water, not cold, not ice, and then apply rubbing alcohol to the feet and armpits. That helps to alleviate some of the loss of the extra heat from the body, but call and go to your veterinarian right away. As I said for, uh, about the pads, it's not something that necessarily shows up that same day, but with circulatory effects, those things can be quite dramatic too within 48 hours after that heat exposure. So contact your veterinarian anyway because there may be some preemptive work that your veterinarian will recommend for hydration and support, not just getting out of the uh, hot temperatures. And then with those hot temperatures, heat exhaustion is a pretty serious threat for our pets right now too. I guess, is it a pretty common thing that we're going to be seeing that pets can be seeing right now? Yeah, we, uh, we didn't have as many hot days last summer, so fortunately we didn't see as many pets affected by this, but this year and with these temperatures that Gary was talking about, we're going to be affected. So please be on the front end of this. Veterinarians are there at the back end to be able to help if there's something that happens, but I know that there is a pet out there right now that is not affected and a family that could do the preventive steps, that's who, that's who I'm appealing to right now to make sure that we are not in this position this next week when pets are exposed to these temperatures. Right, got to be prepared right now. Appreciate you for joining us this morning, Dr. Visser. Thanks, and if you want to contact the pet vet, Dr. David Visser, you can reach him at the Center for Animal Health by calling 888-PET-VETS or you could shoot, you could shoot him an email at michiana-petvet at comcast.net. And thanks for joining us. We're going to have more news coming up right after the break.